Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video. Um, I love everything to do with business, finance, and I'm really just finding so much interest in everything. I feel like it's the last year I've done so much research and read so many books all about growing your businesses, marketing, finance, how to build your business, and all sorts of things as well within our personal life with finances. And oh my gosh, I've learned so much. I wish at school they taught you all these things. I feel like it's something that you really should be um, taught about because I felt like I really had no idea what I was doing at the start and I really did just kind of wing it. There's been so many little mistakes and things that I've made along the way and I'm so excited to be sharing it all with you guys. I've had so many questions coming through all about Love Ellis Rose, which is our business. Love Ellis Rose predominantly um, has jewelry, but we also sell sunglasses and hats and um, I Am Special, the book that I wrote for my daughter. We are only five months old. It was like the very first, I think it was the first of August we went live. So. Yeah, we're only five months old, so we're still a baby business. We're definitely um, still in the teething stages and there's still so many things that we're trying to figure out. But I feel like within the five months, there's been so much that I've learned. Um, I really love doing it. And just some things that you guys are really wanting to know that I'm wanting to share with you, the not so pretty side. I think a lot of people think like it's just, you know, one of those things we wake up one day and go, oh, I want to own my own business. Um, it's not like that at all. I've got myself a coffee because this is only my second one today and it's almost two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm gonna go pick the kids up soon. I need some energy. <laughs> so firstly, I'll start with the name because I always get asked, um, how did you pick your name? So this one was so easy for me. Actually, initially, I just wanted to call it Ellis Rose and Ellis Rose is already taken, so I couldn't use that name. Um, so then Love Ellis Rose is Lincoln's and Miller's middle name. So Lincoln's middle name is Ellis and Miller's middle name is Rose. So they're my kitty's middle names. So as soon as I thought of it, I was like, yep, that's the perfect name. Like nothing's going to beat that. And I feel like it's got a really a nice ring to it as well. So I'm just gonna go through and have a little look at the questions you guys asked me on my Instagram. Okay, what were the first five things you did to kickstart Love Ellis Rose? So first thing was um, choosing what I wanted to do. And I feel like this is something that I've, I've said this before, I've always had in the back of my mind that I would love to operate a jewelry company. So it's always been something that I've kind of wanted to do. I've always known deep down inside that's what I wanted to do. So first thing, picking what you wanna do. Second thing, start saving some money. Um, Third thing, figure out your name. Fourth thing, just start taking action. Make a website, buy an ABN, do all those little things um, to make you kind of accountable because well, what I did was I bought like the one year long contract with my website. I'm like, oh crap, I don't want to pay that for a whole year and not have it up and running. So it kind of pushes you to get it up and pushes you to take action and do things to get it all happening. And fifth thing, sit down and write out like what you kind of want your brand to be about. And for me, my brand's kind of stayed similar to um, Aussie Mum Vlogger, I feel like. I feel like with that, my branding's always been for every person to feel like worthy and beautiful. And that kind of stems off of that as well. And all goes back to Miller with her cleft and her feeling like she's worthy and beautiful um, no matter what. Everyone and anyone has a right to feel like they are amazing. How do you find you are able to compete with other jewelry brands on the market? Honestly, I'm really bad at this sort of stuff, but I feel like it's been good for me. I don't even look at other brands in the market. I don't even look what anyone else is doing. I seriously just have like my headlights on and focus on what I like and what I want to do. Um, I would have no idea what other brands are doing and it might be very um, like sheltered of me to be like that. Um, but I just think I'm just going to stick in my lane and do what I think and hopefully it works out and so far it has, so that's good. How did you start? Pretty much just those five points that I said before. I already, always knew that it was something that I wanted to do, but I just needed to wait until we we're in the financial position to be able to um, take action. And I think sometimes what people forget is our business didn't start five months ago when I started Love Ellis Rose. My business that I created started three years ago when I started um, YouTube and came up with my own brand of Aussie Mum Blogger. So for me, I feel like my situation is a little bit different than the average kind of person um, because it kind of went off of that. So I built up Aussie Mum Blogger to a point where I was like, okay, I'm going to invest a little bit of that money into now funding something else that I've really wanted to do. So that's kind of how it happened for me. And social media and social media marketing is amazing. Um, I feel like that's really, really, really helped grow Love Ellis Rose because me as one person um, can only reach so many people and 
getting people on board as ambassadors and helping promote has definitely, I recommend to anyone starting out a small business, definitely um, try to build up a little bit of funds to be able to pay people to market your product for you. To this day, I have still not taken home $1 from Love Ellis Rose. So all the money that I make goes into, I've hired my sister as staff, so it goes to paying my sister and then all the rest goes straight back into the business. So whether it's buying new stock, repurchasing stock, or paying influencers, marketing, Facebook ads, anything like that, that is where all of my funds go. And I'm planning on trying to do that for as long as I can because I feel like that's why the business is growing so quickly because I'm putting so much effort, energy, time, and money into it. So I think that's really important for everyone to know as well is that I don't actually take anything home from Love Ellis Rose. Um, it is just seriously like a hobby. It's something that I love doing and it's a, it's my baby. It's something that I'm nurturing and working on and hopefully in the next few years, it can be at a point where I can actually make some money off of my hours that I put into it. But for now, it's just not about that for me. Thanks, Yen. No worries. See you, Yen. Love you, bye. Okay, so a lot of people ask me about how I found a good supplier. This has been, oh my gosh, this has been the part that has been so, so difficult. And even finding nice jewelry, it takes a lot of effort, energy, research. Um, and it's not something where I just go somewhere and go, oh, I like that, 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 and that. It's like, no, I sit on my phone for hours to find one piece that I'm after. So it's definitely um, a trial and error. You might order something and think that it's going to be great, get it in and the quality's crap and you're just like, no, I'm not up to standard, I can't sell it. So there's so many things like that. Um, there's been hundreds and hundreds of dollars that we've spent on items that just haven't been up to standard and we just haven't put on the website or sold, hundreds and hundreds. Um, so yeah, that is definitely the most time consuming thing and all I have to say is you've just got to put in the time like anytime that I had a spare second I, I am researching jewelry anytime I'm sitting down if I'm eating lunch breakfast I'm sitting there trying to find new stock trying to um, talk back and forth to suppliers it's not something where you just find a supplier and it's it's easy um, it definitely takes a lot of back and forth <laughs> and it does my head in but it is so, so good when you find something good. I'm like, yes, it's like digging for gold. Seriously, you go through like hundreds and hundreds of pieces and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I love it. I need that piece in my life. Next question is any mistakes you've made? Definitely with my book initially. Um, so before I started Love Ellis Rose, I actually have come out with a children's book as well. I am special, but I stuffed up massively with my book. I just went all in. Um, the book, the cost to make the book is so expensive. Um, I did a hardcover book, so they're just so expensive to actually cost to make. So we haven't made much money on them, which that's totally fine. You've got to live and you learn. Um, and we ordered way too many. So we ordered a thousand books. I think we're now down around about halfway at around about 500, but that's a lot of children's books. Um, but that was just me not really having any idea. And at the time it wasn't a heap more for me to go a um, thousand books versus 500 books. So I was like, I'm just gonna go a thousand, but I still could have saved myself a few grand by going 500 books. And I kind of wish that I did do that because I would nearly had gotten rid of them all, but they're still stocked up in our house. Another 500 books. I'm sure we will eventually get through them, um, but it has been one of those things where it's just been a loss. Like it's been something I will never, ever, ever regret making. And I'm so proud of it and I love it to bits. And I feel like Miller one day will be very, very grateful, but it hasn't been the best decision financially. It hasn't been something that we've like sold the books and it's made us a bunch of money or anything like that. Yeah, the effort and energy and everything that went into it, definitely, definitely worth it, but just hasn't paid off financially. So I would say my biggest learning lesson was probably my books and it's made me very weary when ordering jewelry and I make sure that my first order I do a pretty small amount and then once I check the quality, um, then I go in and I do like a big bulk order. So always my first bite, always on Love Ellis Rose, my first drops are always pretty small um, because if the jury comes and I approve it and say, yep, quality controls like good, then there's not a bunch there. And then the next order after that, normally we have a little bit more. How do you get the business out there? Definitely, like I said, social media marketing. I think, you know, it's, um, worth it. I think it's definitely worth it to get it out there. And I think that's one of the main reasons why our business has grown so quickly. Other than that, getting my business out there, that is literally all I've done. I've done the Instagram, social media marketing. I've sent off um, some free items too, so you can do that. So I've posted off to some influencers things for free. Um, some of them have 
tagged us when I've done that, others haven't and that's totally fine. Um, but I have still seen all those ones that haven't tagged us still wearing our jewelry all the time, which is really, really nice. You can always collaborate with other brands. So you could reach out to another small company and say, hey, I'll like cross promote. I can promote your product. You can promote mine. Um, if you didn't have the funds to be able to pay someone to promote your product. I love collaborating. It just helps all small businesses grow, especially if there's one kind of similar size to you. It's a really, really nice way to help grow each other's business and to get to meet really nice, like-minded people. So definitely, 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 I think key is collaborating. Hi, hey, little kitty. I got kitty on my lap and Macy back here. I don't know whether this is like a backhanded compliment and I don't know whether this person knows that I can actually read <laughs> who they are because they actually comment really nice things usually on my photos. But anyway, why jewelry? There's already so many like yours. Um, because I like jewelry and I don't really think there is so many like mine because I feel like what I like and my sense of fashion is so different to everyone else and I feel like there's room out there for everyone. And everyone should just do what makes them happy and everyone should do what lights them up in life. And I think regardless of whether there's somebody out there that's already the best or whether there's hundreds of thousands of people doing it, you should still definitely give it a dig. Definitely go out and give it a dig. Who would have thought back in the day when Blackberry phones were going crazy that Apple would have come in and taken over and been the incredible company they are and changed the way for so many people and yeah, all well, I just have to say back to that why is why not? like. Why not? What would your advice be for someone who wants to grow their business but is struggling? So definitely, like I said, cross-promoting, reaching out to brands, but also being active on there yourself and to get people to get to know you and your business and your family, doing little bits of behind the scenes. I feel like that just makes people, you know, actually get that personable feeling and realize like this actually is just a small family business. I don't know, I think just letting people in and letting people know who you are and really um, making up your mind on what direction you want to go with your brand as well. It's probably the best advice that I have. I hope that makes sense. How do you record slash organize your business finances? I find that the biggest struggle. So I've basically got an offset account all for my business and I do it all completely separate. So I've got my personal account for all the things that I want to do and then I've got a totally separate account for my business and the only thing it is used for is things coming in and things coming out and it's not used for anything else. And I found that's probably the easiest way um, for me to look after that part of the business. What would you say is the most important part of owning your own business? Customer service, 100%. I have always since day dot said that I wanna make sure that I have impeccable customer service and I feel like it's really, really in there with the standard. Anyone that's ever had an issue, their problem is resolved, their money is refunded, um, and I just wanna continue that. I think growing up, I've always worked in jobs where the customer service has been amazing, and it sets some really good values, and I feel like I really wanna continue that. And it's the small things, it's the wrapping of the jewelry and gift wrapping it, and making them feel special, and making them feel valued, and giving them, you know, this is another thing with our jewelry. We put a little card in there who has wrapped and packaged that exact item that they're opening. So it's just personalizing things and making people feel like they're more than just a number. And I think little things like that really do help because I think that's what's missing these days in a lot of businesses. A lot of people feel like, oh, I'm just number 500 or I'm number order this or order that. Whereas I think if you go that extra mile and just make people feel um, like you care and like you actually are grateful for them supporting your business and mean it and show it, um, it can really go far. How did you register, register an ABN and business name, etc.? So I just went through the exact same way that everyone else does. I just did it all online um, and registered both my ABN and business name. This isn't my first time doing it. So when, before I even started YouTube, I used to do videography. So I actually have done all this like this is actually on paper like my second business because Aussie Mum Vlogger is my company where I do videos for people, I do editing for people. Um, I don't really do it anymore, I do a little bit. Um, and all of my YouTube and Instagram and everything like that. So this is kind of my second rodeo, which is I think why it was so much easier for Love Ellis Rose and it ran a lot smoother. And then my book was my first like project where I came out and tried to sell something. So I think having those two things um, definitely made this time a lot easier and a lot more smooth sailing with Love Ellis Rose, which was really nice. But there's still so many things that we're learning and so many things I would do different if I had my time over again. And there's still so many things that I wanna do and, and uh, you know, my scariest thing is now I'm at the point where it's expanding and I'm like, crap, do I wanna go and rent an office space? Do I wanna stay here? Do I wanna open a shop front? Like there's so many different ways you can go about it all, um, but it's all very expensive and it's all very freaking scary. Um, so at the moment I'm just trying to like hold on having the office at home and having it here for as long as I can, hopefully another six months or so. 
um, and then I'm probably gonna have to try to figure something out because I don't think we're gonna be able to stay here for too much longer without starting to fully intrude in the house, which is not particularly what I want. I don't really wanna walk out onto my kitchen bench and have wrapping and books and jewelry and sunnies, which I have done that for a very long time. When I initially did my books, they seriously lived on our dining room table for like a month. <laughs> is the business benefiting your financial status in life? I don't think so yet. I think it's just too early. Um, like I said, if I, if I started taking away um, some money for myself and paying myself, obviously it would, but I'm not doing that yet. Something that I'm really thinking of putting in place is just working off a percentage rate, so paying myself like 10% of each week's earnings. So that way, if we have a quieter week, I earn less. If we have a busy week, I might earn a, a little chunk of money, um, but at least then I'm getting paid and it's not really putting too much stress on the business to not be able to financially keep up with everything um, if it is a quieter week. So that's something I'm kind of thinking of doing and I think that's a really smart way to start out because it's not like I'm gonna pay myself $500 a week and then you have a really quiet week and you're like, oh crap, I can't pay myself and I need the money and blah, blah, blah. So I thought by working off a percentage rate um, might make it a little bit easier at the moment for Love Ellis Rose. But yeah, right now, if anything, we're losing money because I feel like I'm always putting money into the business. I feel like I'm always putting more into it. Um, but in saying that, it is going very well. Like it's turning over very well. It's running really smoothly. Um, we're making the money back. So when I put money into it, it is definitely being made back. But I feel like I'm just like running on momentum at the moment and just like keep going, keep going, keep going, keep like chucking things in. And the more I am nourishing it and putting the work in, it's definitely paying off. But am I personally financially benefiting from Love Ellis Rose? Not yet. <laughs> but the way it's going, hopefully I will get there soon. Okay, another question. How did you go getting the finances to do a website and doing logos and everything like that? So guys, I am one of those people, if I wanna do something and I don't have the funds, I'll learn to do it myself. So I've actually learned to make all my own logos and I actually put together a whole website ourselves. So I bought it off Squarespace, but I spent seven hours and put the whole website together. And that's the second website I created as well because I've already done it before for Aussie Mum Blogger, which that one's now closed down. Um, but I definitely think, you know, there's ways around not spending thousands of dollars on getting somebody to set up a website for you. It takes time because you don't know how to do it and it took me so long. But if you just look on YouTube, there is seriously YouTube videos for everything out there. Um, how to create business cards, how to create logos, how to do anything you wanna do. Um, there is definitely a video for it. So that is what I did. I seriously just sat there for hours copying YouTube videos and figuring out how to get it to happen and get it to work. So you can definitely, definitely get away with not spending much at all to set up the website and everything like that. I think initially with Love Ellis Rose, we maybe forked out like a couple of grand, like two grand or something like that to get it all up and running. And then that was it. All the rest, everything I just kind of did myself. And I think it's worked fine. I think eventually it would definitely be good to have somebody come in and like shush everything up and fix the website up because it's not amazing because I did it myself and I'm not someone um, who knows how to create a website amazingly, but it does the job and it works and it's gotten us through the first five months. So yeah, there's definitely ways to learn how to do a lot of those things yourself as well. When did you know you were ready to start your business? When I was thinking about it daily, when I kept thinking, oh, I really wanna do that, I really wanna do that, I really wanna do that, I was like, I've just gotta do it. I've just gotta do it. And you know, it's one of those things, it's like a scary thing, but yeah, I would definitely say, set up the funds first, because it's really scary if you're getting a loan for it. That is another thing we did wrong with the book. With the book, I actually lent all the money it costs for us to do it, like thousands of dollars, way more than I put into Love Ellis Rose. So that was my biggest learning curve too. I was like, I'm not doing that, I'm saving the money first. So I would definitely save up the money and just plot away at starting it up and just start doing it now. Just do the small things, take the action, put that little bit of money towards it, um, give it that hour a day of sitting down and planning things out. And like I said, just try, I know a lot of businesses, you probably do need a loan, especially if it's like a big amounts that you need to initially get it up and running and happening. Um, but if you can just try to save even half of it, it takes a pressure off because it's not like I have to pay back this loan and we're not selling any products because I felt that pressure massively with the books. Whereas with the jewelry, it was like, we had already saved the money. If we lose it, we lose it. 
we don't, then that's great, but we didn't have to actually like pay any anything back, which was great. Again, does Love Ellis Rose supply a stable income for your family? Hope this isn't too personal. I feel like I'm a pretty open book. I think, I feel like that's a personal choice. I feel like it could be earning a stable income for our family, but I've chosen to, um, hey kitty, get my sister over to help run everything because I purely just wanted more time with my kids, um, which was the best decision I ever made. So I just pay Sienna now to look after it. Whereas I could be working all those hours and have the money, but it's not really the lifestyle I want with the kiddies yet. Maybe once they get older and they go to school, I'll be more in the office and doing things like that. Um, but for now, Sienna, she's amazing. She runs most of it. I literally just look after all the stock um, or if there's like anything that goes wrong, any issues, then I will help her navigate through them. Um, but I feel like, you know, if we, if I wasn't so focused on just trying to grow the business and I was more so like wanting to make money, we could be, um, if I kind of put things aside. But for, for me personally with this business, it's not so much, um, about the money, which is actually really nice. It's, it's more like the project and me building something and creating something and eventually it becoming something amazing. But for now, that's not where my focus is. I don't really mind if I earn an income each week or not, but no, it's definitely so far, nothing at all. Like zero dollars, like I said, we'd definitely be putting more money into it than we are out. It's been so many times where we've had to like transfer money over because there's been a really good buy that we wanted to get and this item was gonna go and we had no money in the account. So we've like transferred all the money over from our own money um, into the business to be able to buy things. So it's definitely not something that happens overnight. If you've got the time to work on it and you didn't weren't in the position where I was, where you had to hire somebody to come and help because you've got young kids, you could be making the money that she is making working for me. So how do you find having a business with a mortgage expenses? Is it stressful? Sometimes, yeah, honestly, sometimes it is stressful. I mean, the good thing about having your own business is you can kind of in ways pick and choose how busy and quiet you are. So I know if I've got like a really busy month with other things that I need to do personally, I can kind of make the business be a bit quieter, um, which sounds funny, but if you just don't promote it and don't market it as much and don't do bits and pieces like that, it's steady, but it's not like busy. Whereas if I'm just kind of chilling out and I want a crazy busy month um, and Sienna's after a heap of hours, I can just promote it, get a bunch of influencers on board, do Facebook ads, and I know that it will make a busy month. How to write a business plan? It's a really good question. <laughs> I've never ever written a business plan and I've never ever been one like two, I just think I know in my head what I wanna do and how I wanna do it and I just kind of do it. I'm not one of those people, I just said to my sister actually, I'm like we really need like to write down like targets and goals and this and that, but I just don't really want that pressure. Um, I know that sounds really bad and probably a bit blase, but I'm doing this business because I genuinely love it and I love doing it and I enjoy it and it's fun and I don't wanna add any extra stress where it's not needed. I still have my other job. So it is just like a hobby for me at the moment almost. I am still working for another company every Tuesday. So that's making my income. I also have got like my YouTube channel and my Instagram and everything like that as well, which is another source of income. So this for me is just something that is kind of like a, yeah, just like a little project on the side. I really, from day dot, have tried not to put too much pressure or stress on anything with it. Same sort of thing as the customers. Like, I'm not gonna be like, no, like we can't give them a refund and blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't want it to be like that. I just want everyone to be happy. And I just didn't want it to be this stressful thing that put a ton of pressure on me. I just wanted it to be this little side project that I'm really enjoying on the side and hopefully one day it can build up to be this big thing. But there's no stress, there's no pressure. I'm not like, I need to hit like 10,000 followers by this time, I need to hit this much money this week or blah, blah, blah. This person's promoting it, so they need to make this much money. Like, it's not like that at all. And like me and my sister, if we're working in the office together, we have podcasts running in the background. We're listening to like podcasts and like upbeat music and it's not strict. It's not like that. I don't want to have a work environment like that. I want to keep it. I want to keep it how I went in starting it. I want to keep that excitement. I want to keep that fun energy. Um, and because I feel like sometimes when people get so like strict or hard or make things too stressful, that is when like businesses kind of crumble. And if you don't have any stress or, or any pressure and you're like, okay, it's not making 
money this week, but that's okay. I feel like that's a really nice thing that I have about it, but it's true because I didn't give up on everything else. So I think it's, it's probably a really smart idea if you've got like a casual job or a part-time job, keep that job and start your business on the side. So it's not adding any pressure. If you make money, you make money. If you don't, you don't. You're still gonna survive. And I think that's a really good way that I've done it. I haven't gone that said I'm quitting YouTube and going all in on this or I'm quitting that and doing this. It's like, this is just an extra little thing, a hobby that I enjoy doing that I've started up on the side. Like everything, I swear I do that with everything. So even my photography, I'm now doing photography on the side too because I just enjoy it. And I think that's life and you just gotta go with it. And if you feel like you wanna do something and you enjoy doing something, then do it. But just don't quit your day job and don't quit everything like that until you're 100% that you're at a point that you're not gonna be stressed out and it's not gonna be a stressful thing because life's too short to be stressed all the time. But there are moments where it's been like, eh, and it's been stressful. Um, but they're normally sorted out within half an hour. What would you like to do to expand Love Ellis Rose? Love you so much, love you too. I love this question because there's actually so much that I wanna do, obviously get more stock. I've armed and art about opening a shop front, but I just don't think it's feasible in the near future, maybe down the road, maybe down the track, but I don't know. E-commerce is so easy. It's so easy being online and being able to um, do that. There's no rent to pay. Um, it's just been really, really nice and stress-free, which is what I'm after, as you guys know. But I am wanting to expand products -wise. So there's definitely some new things that will be coming to Love Ellis Rose and even in the jewelry There's some things that we're working on to kind of expand that a little bit more and make it a bit more personable again Which I'm really excited about so that's probably within the next month We're trying to work on building that and then again in the future. Yeah, just some more products So I'm really really excited. Anyways, I hope this answered your questions guys I get so many questions about this all the time and I never I feel really awkward I never really know how to answer it properly because I feel like I'm just learning as I go along and I'm honestly just winging it 90% of the time but I feel like the most important thing is making sure that it's something that you love and making sure it's something that you're passionate about and you don't want to be stressed out about it you just still want to be able to enjoy it um, and that's probably my best advice I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon